This news yesterday related to COVID-19. was envisaging the enrollment of clinical trials of what is called as the first indigenous COVID-19 vaccine, Covaxin. By 7th July, such that it says, quote and unquote, the results of the clinical trials can be launched by August 15. And this Covaxin as a vaccine is an output of Birth Biotech International Limited BBIL and here it has joined ICMR in jointly working for the preclinical trials as well as the clinical development of the vaccine. And as you see the notification, the ICMR has garnered partnership from certain clinical partners and it has written to all these clinical trial partners to fast track what is called as the enrollment process. It also says BBIL is working expeditiously to meet the target however the final outcome will depend on the cooperation of all the clinical sites involved in this project. And it also says, which has to be noted, the non-compliance would be quote and unquote viewed seriously. And when the media has approached these two institutions for their comment. Both of these institutions have declined to comment on this notification that has been issued by ICMR. So what is so problematic here? There are certain questions that I have from the ethical perspective. Which I'll elaborate just now. The ethical perspective and the angle from which that I will be looking at this particular issue will tell you how so many ethical dilemmas have been raised because of this single notification that has been issued by ICMR. The first point that we must remember is that this notification has been issued. Please clearly follow this. This notification has been issued by ICMR. However, I was looking at the Bharat Biotech's confirmation on its website. And its website clearly tells me that this is a vaccine for which preclinical development is still ongoing. I repeat, this is a vaccine for which 
preclinical development is still ongoing, factual. And if I extend this argument further, you look at the letter itself along with the notification that has been issued. Even the letter clearly notifies that for this vaccine, the preclinical development is still ongoing. And it is really surprising that the same notification tells us that the clinical trial recruitment be starting on 7th July. Now, how are we concluding here that by 7th July, the preclinical development will be done with? Is it not going to be hasty? How are we defining that its efficacy is approved even before its preclinical development has been completed? And I was telling you that this notification tells us that this vaccine will be launched by 15th of August. That's what it indirectly mentions. That means when Prime Minister would be speaking from the barracks of, from the ramparts of Red Fort, probably they want to convey the world that this vaccine is ready. My point is, the efficacy of this vaccine even at this stage of preclinical development has been decided and this vaccine trial would be completed in little over a month of time period and again in this sense again in the sense of the clinical trials are we saying that its efficacy is pre-decided Second, you look at the list of clinical trial sites that have been mentioned in the appendix of this notification. In Telangana, of course, we have the NIMS in its list. For Mahandra also, there is, I think the hospital, uh, the KGH has been mentioned. There is no issue with that. However, you look at the hospitals from UP. As the notification itself gives you, there are few very small nursing homes, very small hospitals, which are owned by private individuals have been given this responsibility of conducting clinical trials. What is the basis on which you have chosen these hospitals, be it NIMS, be it KGHR, be it any small hospital that you have chosen for UP and Bihar? What is the eligibility criteria that has not been mentioned? On what criteria have chosen them? What is the eligibility conditions that you are looking at? There is a methodology that WHO prescribes. That means you have, you must have first a major list. Then applying the required criteria the required eligibility conditions, you will shortlist few other hospitals which would meet these eligibility conditions. 
we don't have any evidence of even on the website of the ministry of health and family welfare or of the icmr having followed such a process there is no master list from which this list has been shortlisted and given the nature of the covid 19 that it is a pandemic and we must remember here that there is no clear definition of pandemic except that its spread is rampant rampant and its spread is very fast throughout the geography except this there is no clear definition of pandemic even from who as i was telling you in one of my video lectures when it is so choosing these small hospitals choosing these small nursing homes is it not a dangerous phenomena for this pandemic vaccine clinical trial given the question that are they really apt places to test these pandemic related vaccines who has visited these places who have confirmed that these have necessary infrastructure necessary human skill to go for these clinical trials on what basis i am asking this question if you recall the telangana state has stopped these private labs from testing patients for covid 19 just because there is lack complete lack of data related transparency where icmr tells you something government website tells you some other thing but the hospital or the diagnostic center will tell you completely different thing so whatever the data that you are seeing on daily basis from the government has lot of deficiency in terms of its quality in terms of its outcome that the government is coming out with number 2 yesterday one of the health magazines has published how most of these labs including the government ones which have been notified as centers of covid-19 treatment lack the skill to conduct these tests particularly pcr test mm -hmm. because you have to take this swab collecting this swab is a skillful thing you must do it in a flash no private lab according to this report has such a skill that means the test that you are going to conduct now if you don't collect this swab accurately or at least appropriately the possibility of knowing the result exactly would come down immensely considerably so the conducting the test itself is going to be wrong i have experienced it personally thirdly when i am looking at this letter i felt as if i am looking at a threatening statement i don't know whether this has been drafted by the government officials or someone else in the private capacity it's a threat that has been issued in the notification get everything done by 7th july 
That means within five days they must be ready with the preclinical development of this vaccine. And all these sites which have been chosen for clinical trial must also be ready with their recruitment. It also talks about the otherwise scenario. Non-compliance will be viewed seriously. In just a samkastava. But who will be looking at it seriously? That's also not pointed out. Is it ICMR? Is it any other organization? Is it by any power? Is it by the government? Who are going to look at it seriously? At whose orders you are issuing such a threat? Complete nonsense. And as I was telling you, there is a due process that we have as per the law. It said there is a due process as we have as per the WHO guidelines. So because of this threatening letter so called that I am referring to, there is a meaning that I am trying to bring out. Does it mean that all these institutions which have been chosen have to follow all this due process to enable this trial to be run within five days from the date on which this letter has been issued? What about the ethics committee then? What about the approval that must be given by the ethics committee? Are you saying that this ethics committee must also give its approval within these five days? On the one hand, for some of the pharmaceutical organizations, it may appear to be very objective. Yes, objectivity is required. They are looking at it as a target oriented approach. But it is showing us the undue pressure on not only these institutions but also on the ethics committee that I am referring to. Is it not appearing in its terminology that it is putting pressure on these institutions? Here I must also point out where from this probably hasty approach is emanating. If you look at the details of the vaccine candidate named Covaxin which has been successfully developed by Bharat Biotic as it is claimed in its website. This has been done as I was telling you in collaboration with ICMR and along with that you must know that there is another institution which has been involved in this entire development. The National Institute of Virology which has been in the news since the time we are seeing this pandemic. The SARS-CoV-2 strain was isolated in this National Institute of Virology located in Pune. And this was transferred to Bharat Biotech. So this entire indigenous inactivated vaccine which was developed and probably manufactured in Bharat Biotech has also the involvement of these two institutions 
from the government that means it's a symbol of thriving public private partnership that prime minister was also entailing continuously in his public addresses and if you remember this has been a tendency in many areas of the production and as you know even telangana government was taking lot of pride because the facility called bio safety level 3 of bharat biotech that is which is an high containment facility is located in this jinom valley hyderabad and when this notification has come from icmr we have also seen the simultaneous permission which has been given from the minister of health and family welfare you know that there is an organization named the drug controller general of india which functions under this organization cdsco it has also granted permission to initiate the phase 1 and phase 2 human clinical trials when the company has submitted the results generated from its preclinical studies and this clearly tells us that these studies have also demonstrated the safety aspect of it the studies have also demonstrated the immune response both hence dcg claims here saying that the human clinical trials hence are scheduled to start across india in this month itself and here again you must look at the statement from bharat biotech which said that there was lot of proactive support and guidance from this institution cdsco which has enabled bharat biotech to get approvals for this project it also says icmr and niv were also instrumental in the development of this vaccine the statement would have been appropriate if the notification would have been probably rational collaboration doesn't mean that you get approvals hastily without looking into the details of the requirements because it's all about the human trials it's about one's life on the one hand you have those national regulatory protocols as it has been prescribed by the minister of health and family welfare itself on the other you have the acceleration that is required for this collaboration to achieve this objective to complete the comprehensive preclinical studies which have to be held however you must here remember that the statement is very interesting here the results from these preclinical studies as we know as per the notification they have yet been completed as per the website of bharat biotech also they have not been completed however this statement here says that the results from these studies have been promising i don't know what promising they were incomplete statement and it says they show extensive safety and effective immune responses unless and until you elaborate these 
it's incomplete extensive safety in what respect what are you referring to as criteria here what is this effective immune response that you are referring to details are missing Yes, it is a matter of national importance. Yes, this ongoing research and the expertise that probably we have developed because of this collaborative partnership will lead us to learn. will lead us to give the experience in forecasting these epidemics that may occur in future and probably i may recall here that this ever ongoing research and the expertise that we have gained in forecasting these epidemics have already enabled us to manufacture a vaccine for h1n1 pandemic if you recall this may also give us strength to handle the future pandemics but again there are questions from the same press statement which have been given by the bharat biotech why yes you are saying that the approval for phase 1 and phase 2 studies have been granted by the dcga yes they are human clinical trials but let me ask this question you have this list of institutions which have been shortlisted to run these clinical trials but please let me know what are those institutions in the list which are going to run these phase 1 studies what are these phase 1 studies these phase 1 studies are the safety related studies you were saying that they have taken into consideration extensive safety of this vaccine what is this extensive safety what are those studies involved how did you conclude that without going for these safety related studies in terms of clinical development there is no clarity what are those institutions which are going to run these phase 1 studies which are safety related studies why am i pointing out this if there are only few institutions which run these phase 1 studies it would be possible for us to look at these institutions from the perspective of the precautions that these institutions must take the risk management steps that they must initiate unless and until you clearly point out that these are the institutions which are going to have the phase 1 studies which are safety related studies it's really dangerous play that you are trying to play hence the initial question that i have asked what is the criteria that you have chosen how did you shortlist these institutions what is the eligibility conditions that you are looking at at least since 15 years i am following icmr and its functioning even though it was not part of upsc syllabus 
and this habit of looking at these major health related institutions from the perspective of philosophy there is a clear transition that i see in icmr if i recall what that letter was mentioning it says that we have what is called as subjects it says this is one of the top priority projects which is being monitored at the top most level of the government we don't know what this top most level of the government is be it president is it prime minister or is it vice president or is it the speaker of the house who are they because government includes all the organs of the government that can also be even judiciary the letter says you have been chosen as a clinical trial site of the bvb 152 covid vaccine in view of the public health emergency there is no clarity as to what this public health emergency is due to covid 19 pandemic and urgency to launch the vaccine you are strictly advised to fast track all approvals related to the initiation of clinical trial that means what we don't know which of these institutions have approval we don't know which of these institutions have no approval that means they have to create all the relevant infrastructure relevant requirements relevant skill within these 3 or 4 days and then get the approval it continues by saying that such that it can ensure quote subject and quote enrollment subject enrollment is initiated no later than 7th july 2020 just rubbish and as a continuation as i was pointing out earlier the non compliance will be viewed very seriously by whom the top most level of the government probably those who are there at the top most level of the government and at the top most level of this icmr have forgotten the transformation of icmr through its own ethics guidelines as i was telling you letter uses this expression subjects for clinical trial brutal it is brutal because icmr has gradually transformed itself to use more ethical expressions ethically acceptable terms and rather than subjects it has this most ethically acceptable term called participants whenever the pre clinical trials are held these pre clinical trials will be held by the institution which has developed that vaccine that means in this case it is bbil since the time of institution of this national pharmaceutical authority i am closely watching it also
there is still acceptance of this expression subjects when it has been used to denote those who would be undergoing these trials in the acceptable capacity typically it is observed with the pharmaceutical industry when they hold their regulatory studies when they hold their safety studies they have the typical usage called subjects why am i referring to this i am referring to this because if this has been a letter written by icmr it should have gone for a more ethical and more acceptable expression called participants in place of subjects and secondly if this is the expression that can be used typically in the pharmaceutical regulatory studies my point is this by any chance is this a letter not written by icmr but by bbil because you are typically using this expression typically issuing a threat through this letter every term that i am looking at here somehow appears that this letter is an internal letter of bbil but not of icmr this letter has been just taken up by icmr and it has changed the logo of the organization and then issued this to the public even though i am doing a game of guess here this question seems to be appropriate you can't avoid this question there is one more flaw in this entire episode you look at this list of hospitals and the list of doctors that we have prakar hospital private limited kanpur and if i look at the hospitals from bhubaneswar hospitals from goa i don't know what to really talk there is no hospital name for the hospital from bhubaneswar it mentions only the doctor's name dr ganga dhar sah there is this hospital in goa again whose name is not mentioned however the doctor's name is mentioned dr sagar vivek redkar who is a consultant physician in the room number 11 on the mumbai goa highway जीवन रेखा हॉस्पिटल बेलगाम राणा हॉस्पिटल गोरखपुर व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू पॉइंट आउट बाय पॉइंटिंग आउट दीज हॉस्पिटल्स एंड द डॉक्टर्स नेम्स you know that this organization is there cdsco what is this cdsco central drugs standard control organization it functions under the dghs directorate general of health services under 
मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया दिस ए रेगुलेटरी बॉडी एट द नेशनल लेवल फॉर बोथ इंडियन फार्मास्यूटिकल्स एंड ऑल्सो द मेडिकल डिवाइसेज दट वी यूज इन इंडिया Ethics Committee functions under this CDSCO. Number one, number two. When I was listing out these hospitals and also the doctors' names, remember, all these hospitals, all these doctors must have themselves registered with this Ethics Committee of CDSCO, which is mandatory. we don't know whether they have been registered with this ethics committee or not i was looking at one or two names and i have found that they have not that means what they have not done any kind of vaccine trials before this notification how do i know that unless and until they are registered with the ethics committee of cdsco they do not have the eligibility to hold these vaccine trials hence all these questions there is one more procedural flaw that i have to refer i was referring to what is called as due process that has to be followed by all these required institutions including icmr including national institute of virology including bharat biotech and including the list of hospitals or doctors which have been mentioned in this notification under icmr you have this institution called national institute of medical statistics this is a government funded institution see remember you have to do this exercise when i tell you that you have to remember through this india year book all the ministries and departments that you have you have to remember certain key institutions which are functioning under these ministries there is a requirement that i trying to ask you to fulfill you can't just mug up these institutions and remember them you have to apply them you have to interconnect all these dots this institution called national institute of medical statistics which functions under the icmr jurisdiction has one fundamental duty to perform it acts as the clinical trials registry of india clinical trials registry of india that means what those hospitals and those doctors who have to hold these clinical trials must themselves get registered with these clinical trials registry of india set up by icmr national institute of medical statistics the joke is this notification for getting registered with national institute of medical statistics through the ctri has been issued after this notification has been issued by icmr meaning what indirectly icmr is telling us that some of these hospitals or doctors do not have earlier experience of holding 
the vaccine trials. Moreover, if you look at the details of the notification and the details that has been mentioned in the ICMR website and also the Bharat Biotech India Limited websites, they tell us that the type of trial that we are going to conduct is interventional. They also tell us that it is a randomized study. It's a randomized trial. It's an active controlled trial. All these three expressions have their own specific meaning. All these would be held and all these hence have their own issues being raised in ethical terms. I don't want to get into those details because they are more technical in nature. And whatever the points that we are listing out, that is more than sufficient. However, there is one aspect from the general studies perspective that I have to look at. That all these interventional studies or trials that we are going to hold, this randomized trial that we are going to hold and the active control trial that we are going to hold is possible only when you have healthy volunteer. Because as it clearly gives us the public title of the study which is whole virion inactivated SARS-CoV-2 vaccine an inactivated vaccine this has to be held on healthy volunteer when it asks you to list out all these so called subjects for these clinical trials by 7th July without which you would be looked at seriously by the topmost level of the government how will this due process related to choosing these healthy volunteers would be followed by these institutions and who are going to supervise it oversee it and regulate it if you issue such threats through these notifications. And whatever the study that preclinical trial or whatever the trials that BBL has held that must also get registered with this. And if you look at further details either in terms of principal investigator or in terms of trial coordination which is required. Because it's a multi-center study. Here this responsibility has been put into the hands of again Bharat Biotech. Not any government official. If there is any scientific query that you have. Which has to be asked either by these clinical participants that we have. Which are going to hold these post-development clinical trials or by any general public or any public spirited person again the scientific way has to be forwarded to whom this principal coordinator again a private person probably this has been held so because whatever the monetary support or the material support which is being given it is completely the responsibility of again Bharat Biotech there is no mentioning of ICMR or NIV. 
the primary sponsor of even this entire clinical trials is again Bharat Biotech. The point is when every responsibility is in the hands of Bharat Biotech, even in terms of these clinical trials, without having the participation of the government institutions which have probably the expertise in regulating these clinical trials, this raises further questions with regard to authenticity of these trials. The next question that rises is this trial has been registered for phase 1 and phase 2 study as we have seen and you have announced that on the 15th of August you want to get this vaccine ready meaning When you conduct this phase 1 and phase 2 study and then you get them registered with this registry, why are we doing it? We are, we, we are doing it in order to ensure that the efficacy data is available with us. Whatever the healthy voluntaries that they would go through, clearly give us this data related to efficacy. Because in preclinical trials, as it is told, you have extensive safety and promising results with regard to efficacy. So when I combine these two dots now, that is the date of notification of this trial registry and also the date of announcement that they want to have as This vaccine has been released. You are saying that within this limited period of 40 or 45 days, you want this efficacy data to be ready. You want to study about the safety, you want to study about the reactive reactogenicity in, in uh, technical terms that we use it. We want also to study the tolerability. We want also to study the immunogenicity, that means how it further generates the immunity within this healthy volunteer. And all these four aspects of this clinical trials must give us this efficacy data by August 15th. How can this deadline lead us to have the efficacy data in case there is a failure? That means rather it is saying that efficacy data will be ready by 15th August. That means they have already concluded that this is the vaccine that we are going to release. That's what it appears. When I looked at the CTRI website, you observe that whatever the ethics committees that these private hospitals have and the ethics committees 
at the regional level that we have and the ethics committee at the central level. As I told you, they have to give the approval. And it is really fascinating and intriguing to know the status of these approvals. Whereas the ethics committee of All India Institute of Medical Sciences Delhi has submitted its candidature for ethical approval and it is still under review. You observe that the ethics committee of Prekar Hospital Private Limited in Kanpur has been approved by itself. The Jeevan Rekha Hospital of Belgaum has got the approval of its institutional ethics committee whereas the King George Hospital, the government hospital of Vishakhapatnam hasn't yet received its approval from institutional ethics committee that it has. Rana Hospital has approved its candidature. But NIMS Institutional Ethics Committee in Hyderabad hasn't yet approved it. Its candidature is still under review. You see, I'm not saying that this is a violation of the ethics related guidelines that we have. I'm saying that on what basis they have approved themselves and what basis NIMS and AIMS are still keeping themselves under review. The criteria is important. There is one more very significant aspect. When you look at the CTRI website, it says that the first enrollment into the trial would be 13th of July 2020. But what I was telling you, looking at the ICMR letter, which is about this required trial enrollment that has to begin with respect to so-called subjects, it has to start by which date? 7th of July 2020. What is this discrepancy? More importantly, I think, as a conclusion, please remember that with whatever the knowledge that I have in this area, so called the limited knowledge that I have in this area, since when I am looking at this pharma related issues, such an accelerated development pathway that has been resorted to by the topmost level of the government whatever that is and ICMR and NIVR whatever the medical reputed institutions that we have in India as part of the regulatory mechanism within the government. This has not been done ever for any kind of vaccine even for the ones that are being tried out in other countries. Remember even the developed countries such as USA, European Union have projected themselves to get ready by the vaccine at least within an year. But not earlier than that. Even WHO has said that. No one is so hasty about it. Yes, the impact of COVID-19 in every respect is too adverse. If I recall, IMF has actually originally projected that the growth rate for this particular financial year 2021 would be 5.8 percent on the date on which the budget has been presented. Later on, in April, it has again projected that the growth rate would be to the tune of 1.8 percent, a drastic reduction. 
by nearly 4 percent. Can anyone tell me what was its projection in June that it has given for the Indian economy? The adverse impact is very well known of the COVID-19 on economy, similarly on society, similarly on the families. From 5.8% to minus 4.0% within these four months clearly tells you the adverse impact of COVID-19. Yes, we know the urgency with which we have to get our job done. However, objectivity here means not just getting the job done, but getting it done by adhering to the due process that is recommended. Hence, these accelerated timelines that we have, the real rush with which it is being projected, hence may lead to the potential risks because the risk management aspect and its calculation whether it has been done by all these institutions which are under the review of this ethical committee which are being shortlisted for conducting this phase 1 and phase 2 human trials which is this interventional trials which have to be held on healthy individuals whether all these criteria which are required for such shortlisting shut such selection of the healthy individuals have been followed or not they all tell you that the risk management hasn't been done appropriately hence it is endowed with potential risk that would generally get attached with any vaccine trial and whose gravity is magnified in this case or at least we can conclude that inadequate attention to entire due process has been given. You may note down at least these 10 points. Even though we have had this elaborate discussion. First point we don't have clarity about the research related details. Second, the preclinical trials will be held in what is called as a pilot factory. We don't have any further details about these preclinical trials except the statement from Bharat Biotech which gives, uses one or the other adjectives, extensive. Promising. We don't know what these expressions are. Third, you will hold phase 1 trials and these phase 1 trials will be held on very few individuals, healthy individuals to look at the safety aspect. Second, then you go for these phase 2 trials where the phase 1 trial will have its own extension rather than having very few healthy individuals they will be held on few hundreds of individuals with respect to these two we have shortlisted these hospitals we don't know whether these hospitals have the effective requirements in relationship with conducting such phase 1 and phase 2 trials with respect to eligibility criteria with respect to the parameters that they have to adhere to with respect to the infrastructure requirement with respect to their registration with the ethics committee with respect to their past experience with regard to holding such clinical trials and with respect to their efficacy in conducting such clinical trials including the efficacy of the individuals whose names have been mentioned and their relevant past experience in this arena and as the notification from DGCA clear, DCGA clearly tells us that this approval has been given for phase 1 and phase 2 that means still phase 3 approval has not been given that means are we holding 
only phase 1 and phase 2 up to august 15 are we saying that it is the phase 1 and phase 2 human trials will lead to its approval as a vaccine and without having this phase 3 it will be implemented for the treatment of covid 19 or are we saying that by august 15 this vaccine will be ready on the basis of phase 1 and phase 2 trials which follow this safety and regulatory trials and after which we will have the phase 3 trials which have to be hold which have to be held on thousands of such healthy individuals by the same institutions. Sixth point, only after phase 3 trials, the due process says that you have to go for manufacturing of this vaccine on the industrial scale that can be speeded up. However, Bharat Biotech has shown us that all these efforts have already initiated with respect to building these factories, which is surprising. Seventh, then we go for the manufacturing of vaccine. Here also, you have certain due process to be followed. And we are saying that by building these factories, which have to be speeded up only after the third phase of the human trials which is the fifth point in our list of items that we have listed out manufacturing related efforts have also begun by Bharat Biotech that means we have already concluded that this vaccine would be released probably The eighth point is then only if there is an emergency use the regulatory authority may speed up their approval for emergency use after following all these steps. Then only you can go for the distribution. Then only you can really calculate the final immunity levels. You see, there are clearly 10 steps that you have. This is followed. The Euro by the European Medicines Agency that as a regulatory authority that European Union has. This also followed the Food and Drug Administration of USA. Their standardized practices. So with respect to all these 10 points, you have number of questions. Hence this is a question of ethical standard. Every country is now presenting itself through this lens of what is called as vaccine nationalism. There is a prioritization that you see in the domestic markets related to this vaccine nationalism, particularly in relationship with having the priority access to these doses of COVID-19 vaccine. They are rushing to secure these. Vaccine nationalism is so dangerous that a country is trying to manage as we have seen in the case of hydroxychloroquine where Prime Minister Trump used his entire political capital to convince Narendra Modi our Prime Minister to import their own doses of hydroxychloroquine when India has actually banned the export of this particular drug. Of course, which was based on one of the false studies that one particular company named Sajji Spear has given us. It's again another ethical issue which is different. 
But you have to remember that it is the same level of vaccine nationalism which has caused these falsified reports which has caused these nations to rush to secure these doses of vaccine for its own citizens or residents before they are made available in other countries. And you are here rushing to have what is called as pre-purchase agreements. Not only by these companies but by the government itself with whom the vaccine manufacturer. What about their own citizens in the country where this vaccine is being developed? If there is a scope for any vaccine nationalism, that must address the concerns of their nation first. That must address the concerns of all the people on equal footing if you are looking at the global scale. But this arena of pre-purchase agreements, keeping it at a cost but not for free as it has been advocated by many health professionals around the globe, by many NGOs which are in this arena of addressing public health emergencies, you see lot of profit related aspects getting into its fold. You might have read in the newspaper that the American government has inquired from the German biotech company about the possibility of securing exclusive rights over the vaccine. And in this respect, Germany at the level of Chancellor Angela Merkel has issued a statement saying that whatever the vaccine that will be developed in Germany will be made available in Germany first and then around the world. Germany was right in pointing out that one cannot go for such pre-purchase agreement. This is in relationship with the vaccine nationalism that we are witnessing around the globe. Similarly, you might have heard about this company Sanofi, a French origin company. This French origin company has also come out with its own claim of having COVID-19 vaccine. And remember here that amidst the shortage of funding, it has received partial funding from the American government. As far as I remember, the US Biomedical Advanced Research and Department Authority On the basis of such partial funding that it has received, that is Sanofi, the French origin company, USA has claimed that, I reiterate, USA has claimed that it has the right to largest pre-order of the vaccine. You see? You have this institution named Serum Institute of India that was also making the news in relationship with the development of COVID-19 vaccine. It said that if there is a success in relationship with the development of such vaccine, it says most of the initial batches of the vaccine will be distributed within India. Again related to vaccine nationalism because immediately after these initial batches, according to it, the next batches will be sent to various other requirements in terms of these pre-purchase agreements. How do this company know that these are the initial batches which are required in India? When we see so many number of cases emerging, when we see an unspoken, unannounced transmission at the community level occurring. Vaccine nationalism, either directly or indirectly, you see this. There is one more phenomenon.
phenomenal issue here in relationship with vaccine nationalism. If you recall the newspapers for the last 15 or 20 days, when these vaccinated news are making lot of their appearance, USA has chosen not to join one particular mechanism which has been launched by WHO. Immediately after this, Russia has also chosen not to join this mechanism that has been launched by WHO. And in fact, even India having attained the chairmanship of the executive board of the WHO has also chosen not to join this particular mechanism which has been launched by WHO. What is this mechanism? COVID-19 Tools Accelerator. I repeat, COVID-19 Tools Accelerator. What is this mechanism all about? This mechanism which has been launched by WHO is to promote, quote, collaboration among the countries in the development and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines and also development and distribution of COVID-19 treatments. Unquote. That means no country wants to go for collaborative efforts. They want to have their own efforts. Again, vaccine nationalism to its core. It has been deepened. Hence, Rather than addressing this public health emergency collectively, you are addressing it by applying this unspoken, newly developed nationalism, which will have its own adverse impacts. Patriotism or nationalism can serve you when it is subjected to many limitations. They lead to adverse impact which cannot be quantified at all, which cannot be estimated at this juncture if they are unlimited in their nature, scope and structure. You recall what I have already discussed. Hutus and Tutsis in the African region have massacred each other amidst such public health emergencies either in the form of Ebola or in the form of AIDS whatever that has been seen earlier you have seen such application of the vaccine nationalism with respect to even the H1N1 flu, N1 flu vaccine that has been developed in 2009. There were pre-purchase agreements that these developed economies so called including some of the wealthiest economies have entered into with Several of these pharmaceutical companies which have claimed that they have developed this vaccine related to H1N1. And here, the profit motive of these companies was so huge that they have continually signed these agreements, pre-purchase agreements. I have problem because of big problem because of this. Vaccine nationalism because till today no one has shown their collective bargaining with respect to their right to have access to these vaccines either from the public opinion or from the people's point of view. They lose this collective bargaining power. Second, given the nature of the pandemic that we have today, you know that I was referring to IMF's growth projections for India. It clearly tells us that the resources have diminished like anything. You can't even project 
because whatever you project that will lead to extrapolation because we don't know how deep this crisis is how deep the impact is with such a fewer resources that we have at our disposal if you are resorting to this vaccine nationalism you are clearly rejecting the people's basic right to access the goods which are public goods particularly because they are related to their health which is a basic fundamental right it keeps all your population at most of the risks even if you look at the ethical guidelines that i was referring to earlier either of who or of any particular nation their ethical guidelines clearly tell you that the vaccine development and the fundamental principles which are applicable for this vaccine development primarily must look at their participants their citizens and at the same time WHO guidelines clearly point out because of which it has called for this collaborative development of these vaccines collaborative development of the treatments because public health is always global in its nature and structure that's what this pandemic is clearly telling us it is not limited to any particular nation or any particular region public health is always a global scale this vaccine nationalism and its renewed acceptance and emergence is clearly against such notion of global character of public health that the entire world has recognized because we are all members of the world moreover i have even concerns with this vaccine development even at the domestic scale even if i say that there is no such nationalism called vaccine nationalism what is the concern there is ruthless inequality that we see in each and every country ruthless inequality what this ruthless inequality is telling us this ruthless inequality either in terms of caste or in terms of class or in terms of gender or in terms of any other such discriminatory ruthlessness that we have with respect to particularly india it tells us that access is always inequal injustice prevails we have seen number of case studies till now where people were saying that they have been rejected treatment in these hospitals just because that they have fever and these private hospitals think that this fever might be because of covid-19 all discrimination yesterday there was a news which said that this woman has not been attended to with respect to her pregnancy related pains that she has she was getting just because that the hospital was doubt doubtful that she might have had infected with covid vaccine both mother and kid have died you see this discriminatory practice from gender perspective from caste perspective from class perspective from each and every perspective that means this is occurring because we don't have any framework for equitable access to these vaccines there is no coordinated effort to produce such a framework for equitable access to these vaccines here i am referring to equitable access because this is the fundamental problem that we have at this social level
This is the fundamental problem that we have, even at the political level and diplomatic level. One says that this vaccine would cost so much so. And the other says that no, this vaccine would cost so much so. What about the affordability for each and every one? Will it be subsidized? If it would be subsidized, what is the basis? How it would be subsidized? Is it available for each and every person for free? Nothing has been mentioned. Affordability and access are two fundamental aspects of this equitable framework that I am trying to refer to. More so, rather than looking at this, this has become a subject of geopolitics. I think you are getting sense of what I am trying to refer to as part of your question. Hence the third question now is important. You can't have the vaccine ready just in a hasty manner. Even if you have an emergency, you must also spell out various other requirements that I am pointing out. Unless and until you do that, even though the vaccine is ready, there are various processes and dragons which are readily present to take away the fruits of this public health effort. Hence the dangers associated with it. Hence the number of ethical questions that we have raised are so fundamental in this vaccine development as an important arena of public health. With respect to the issue of coronal, the government has used a different expression. As far as it is immunity related, coronal is allowed, government says. 400 rupees is its cost. No one knows how it is effective in building this immunity against COVID-19. Because the statement of the government is very amusing. It didn't say immunity against COVID-19. It says in the improvement of such immunity, we are allowing coronal. All political gimmick. Hence the ethical concerns are also very much similar. And probably in some cases, in some points, it's also beyond this, even with respect to coronal. It's a kind of Misleading people, deceiving people. So called Balakrishnaji Maharaji was issuing statement as far as our view on coronal is concerned. He says, we were very, very clear. We don't know what that clarity was. We don't know how he could really issue such statement rather than giving how far it is effective, what were their preclinical results were showing, what sort of clinical trials have been held and they may say that this is not a kind of drug, it's an immunity substance that you must take for which they say that it is not considered as part of this definition of drug which has not been clarified yet by the government or any of the other institutions which are regulatory ones that I was pointing out to. All questions, except that it gives you some profit, we don't see any relevance at all with respect to the transparency and accountability with respect to which they must show lot of urgency. Not in the release. Hence, the ethical concerns are also there in this issue of coronal 2.